Hello and welcome to Fact Hunters and the last in this four part series on people who vanished without a trace. Today we're going to cover the tragic disappearance of Jason Jalowski. Jason Anthony Jalowski was an American teenager who disappeared on his way to work on the 13th of June 2001. Now this one is a real mind bender. Unlike the other stories we've covered so far in this series, there is absolutely no evidence or eyewitness reports to indicate an outcome. Jason worked at a fast food outlet in Omaha, Nebraska. He lived with his family not far away and was just a year out of high school. He usually commuted to his shift in his own car, but following some trouble it had given, it was in the shop being repaired. On 13th of June, he was called into the morning shift unexpectedly. Just before he left, his work called and said they'd arranged for a co-worker to give him a ride. Pleased with the news that he wouldn't have to walk, he attempted to give directions to his house, but decided that it would be easier to meet by his old high school as the co-worker knew where it was. He set off for the high school on foot. His younger brother remembers seeing him leave the house, then come back with the trash cans that had just been emptied. A neighbour saw him returning them to the garage and then he set off for the high school. Less than an hour later, the co-worker called saying that he hadn't arrived at the high school. Jason has never been seen since leaving the house. A couple of witnesses said that they might have seen him en route to the school, but this wasn't confirmed. No evidence of any foul play, intentional disappearance or accidental disappearance has ever been found. At 19 years old, Jason was six foot tall, so anyone trying to overpower him would have had a bit of a struggle. He wasn't known to have any enemies or any reasons to vanish. He never used his mobile phone after that day, nor did he cash any paychecks or use his bank account, which had $600 in it. To all intents and purposes, Jason simply vanished off the face of the earth with literally no trace. The case received huge media attention and there was a full investigation by the local police. The co-worker who was supposed to be giving him the ride was questioned extensively and CCTV at the high school they were supposed to meet at was checked, but there was no trace of Jason. Jason's family set up an online community, Project Jason, which provided advice for families who had missing children or relatives. The community was hugely influential and informative and was recognized with Jason's law passed by the state of Nebraska, which created a database of missing persons. Now, the case itself is tragic and the mystery surrounding it even more so, but weirdly, another young white male went missing about a month later from the same area, again without a trace. Both the victims were the same height and build, same ethnicity, and the same age from the same street. The second victim is named as Samuel Sherman on the National Missing and Unidentified Person system, which is linked below in the description. Samuel was going to a job interview and again was last seen leaving the house and never returned. There is remarkably little coverage of the Sherman case. He is mentioned as staying in the area, although he didn't seem to have a permanent residence. He could well have been sleeping rough, but the lack of information when compared to the huge internet and media footprint for Jason is disturbing. The proximity of the two cases naturally points to some kind of link. And from that, it's a short jump to some kind of serial killer in the area, preying on tall white male teenagers. However, again, there is no evidence of this or any foul play or any other link between the two cases. There are a few factors in the Jason Jalowski case. He was called into work unexpectedly at a time when his car was, unexpectedly, not available. His most obvious route to work was to walk, which would have left him more vulnerable than being in a car. Also, and perhaps crucially to the case, Jason had a minor speech and language impediment which could have given him the appearance of a more vulnerable person because he sometimes had less fluent communication, although he didn't have a below average IQ. He was also known to be a very trusting person. If he were to be lured into, say, a passing vehicle in broad daylight, it would likely have been a situation where he felt comfortable, perhaps with the person who knew him and offered him a lift to the high school to meet his co-worker. There is also evidence that he was bullied at high school, although there's nothing to say that this continued into the community college he was studying at at the time of his disappearance. Overall, these two cases are simply tragic mysteries. So we were going to add some links and some information here about Project Jason, which was a fantastic resource and has provided invaluable advice and support to families who are struggling with missing loved ones. However, it seems the project has been taken down. The domain name is now up for sale. So if anyone has any links to a new site or something helpful like this, then please add them below so we can raise awareness of the project. In the meantime, there are a number of online communities and forums based across the whole world, which can give advice and support to anyone who has been involved in a situation like this. We're linking a few of them in the description box below. So that brings us to the end of this four-part series on people who vanished without a trace. We hope you liked it. 
If you did like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't seen the rest of the series, they're linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching.